exclusively on Think Tank. Who's flying this thing? Episode 7, Jacob Sorensen. Ever wonder what it'd be like to animate the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Jacob Sorensen is a lead animator at Digital Domain. And in this episode of Who's Flying This Thing, he joins Scott to share what it's like to work on some of the world's biggest films. Oh my god, what can it be? We're all doomed. Who's flying this thing? All right, that would be me. Back to work. All right, welcome back, everybody. I want to say welcome to my longtime friend and uh, alumni of Think Tank, Jacob Sorensen. Welcome, Jake. Nice to see Hello. you. How's it going? Yeah, you look a lot younger every time I see you. And you got the, <laughs> the style going on. And the hairline, though, is is keeps keeps treading backwards. Well, I, th- I think it's because you're in you're in animation, you know, so you're starting to look yeah. more, more like a cartoon character. Yeah, yeah. Part of it. <laughs> so absolutely. Um I, you know, I don't know where to start. I mean, I can start at the beginning with you, but um, I don't, like I said, I, this isn't about your going through your life story or anything. Uh, for those who aren't aware of what Jacob's about, he's an animator and he's, I would say, and I was just saying this to someone a little while ago, you're you're pretty much reaching the top of the industry. I mean, as far as, you know, you've animated all the <laughs> big superheroes, Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, all the mans. You know, you're in Thor Ragnarok, you've done that one, you know, you, you just, you went, so you sort of kind of went from crawling to, to running, like there was yeah. no, yeah, it went pretty quick. Yeah, and <laughs> creatures too, I mean, uh, you know, I was saying that the next step is, is, is going to be Anim Supervisor if you're interested, mm-hmm. some people aren't, you know, some people just yeah. want to sit in the trenches and keep on doing what you do. Um, and then we're going to get to that other thing that you mentioned uh, a while back. We talked uh, on a questionnaire we sent you, and, and Star Wars was on your radar. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's still there, but Star <laughs> Wars has kind of changed a lot too because we've got these spin-off shows now, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's almost like it's, it's almost like like Mandalorian, Boba Fett, and and uh, Obi Wan are not TV shows really, yeah. but they're not film either. You know, they're kind of in that gray area in between. Yeah, I, so, I like that it's making it more, it's making it easier to be able to be a part of that universe on the, on the yeah. animation side. So. Well, they're kind of fleshing out the whole story. You know, they're kind of yeah. filling in a lot of those gaps and stuff, which yeah. is a bit of a minefield, frankly, because <laughs> there's a lot of people out there that are like, don't blank with Star Wars. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would consider myself one of those. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Also, like when when the when the newest sequel trilogy came out, it made me like the prequels a lot more. I went back and watched those, and I was like, okay, these actually have something. <laughs> well, I gotta say the the prequels have moments of absolute glory in them. Yeah, you know the pod race is fabulous. It's unbelievable. Yeah, like yeah. and actually, uh, the, the guy that that animated a big chunk of the pod race worked here for a while as an animation. Oh, teacher. really? Yeah, and so he was, you know, he was a big fan, obviously. Um, the Yoda lightsaber battle is great. Yeah. Um, uh, the fight in the arena against the, what the hell, they, whatever they, those things were, you know. The, the Geonos, Geonosians or yeah, whatever something like that. <laughs> so there was, there were certain parts of it that were, were great. And I, and yeah. I loved, I loved. And other parts, and there was a lot of story too, a lot of yeah. story. Yeah, so, they had somewhere they had to get to, which is yeah. always difficult. So I don't know. And, and then the whole grizzly, uh, you know, Anakin, <laughs> that last battle was, we just die already, you know? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me. Uh, but anyway, and then he survives, you know, whatever. Yeah. becomes the, the, the Vader man, which is, <laughs> you know, we need, we need a villain, right? You need a yeah. good villain. He's, he's an iconic villain. Yeah. Which, which brings me to Obi-Wan. I've been watching that show a little bit and they sure got the voice right. Like, yeah. Uh, didn't they rip that voice off from uh, James Earl Jones or something? Was I think I thought it. I could be wrong, but I thought they got him back to do it. Oh, did they? Oh, okay. I thought. I think so. Okay, because they, they whoever's doing it is getting it. Right. Yeah, if it's not, it's perfect. <laughs> Pretty crazy. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm glad that they're, you know, they know they're playing with fire and they're you know, sure. pissing off. They're going to piss somebody off. I mean, they can't. Yeah, you can't not. There's always going to be some people. But uh, but anyway, let's get back to to you. I remember when you started, and I'm and this is just a broad question, but you know when you got 
involved in 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 3D and you kind of you started here. Uh, did you know animation was your thing like from the get go? I think so. I uh, like I remember coming there. Like I came to Think Tank a couple times mm -hmm. before I went there as a student, and I just I remember like I I, I wasn't good at drawing. I, I I wasn't really good at anything else, but I feel like I could get my mind around like body mechanics and that kind of thing. Yeah. And it, like, like the the term body mechanics, I don't think even entered my head. But it just the movement of things made more sense to me than yeah. than drawing or sculpting or that kind of thing. So. And then just just the aspect of like my mom would come drop me off and pick me up like eight hours later and I'd be like that was eight hours like <laughs> yeah. people get paid to do this stuff this is awesome <laughs> yeah your mom's super mom too she was like you know I'm like no make them walk home you know yeah <laughs> oh no I'll pick him up and I'll have dinner waiting for him when he gets home yeah yeah I'm tired your dad was the opposite that was like He'll, 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 he won't do it. He's going to drop out after like three months. You know, he's so lazy. And I'm like, well, actually, yeah. no, he's actually crushing it. No, that, yeah. that no. was, that was my motivation to yeah, prove him wrong. Was very <laughs> I was just like, no, he's actually probably the best student in the class. And I think he's <laughs> going to make it like be fine. Oh, you just wait and see, you know, mark my words. I said, ah, we'll see, you know, but I knew by then, by then it was second semester and you were already kind of on yeah. your way. So I didn't have any doubts, but and I, I I've done this long enough that I can tell when somebody's got mm -hmm. what it takes, and you certainly had what it takes. So, uh, anyway, um, so you know when you're when you're working on some of these shows, I mean these are blockbuster shows. These are these mm -hmm. are big shows. Like seriously, um, you know you don't and, the, and when like I said, Star Wars is iconic and an untouchable thing, but so are so are the Marvel and DC characters. Right. You yeah. know you start messing around with Superman or Spider-Man, and you, can, <laughs> you, know, you start screwing that up, you're going to hear about it. Yeah. So, so when you're doing that stuff, when you started handling those characters, did you feel the pressure? Like, was it was it on you? Yeah, it's, it was, especially Spider-Man, and it being Marvel's, like, I, I worked on Spider-Man Homecoming, so it was sort of Marvel's first foray into Spider-Man after they purchased Marvel, or, or, yeah, after they purchased it. Yeah. Disney purchased it from Marvel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a little bit daunting. At the, like, I have this character and he's climbing up the Washington Monument on my computer and I'm like, right. okay, like this is up to me now, I guess. <laughs> you ever have that, that supervisor take you aside or that lead animator take you aside? Jake, it's Spider-Man, man. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I did that to myself almost every morning. <laughs> That's good. I saw that show. That was a great show, by the way. Yeah. I like all I like all the Spider Mans, the new ones. Mm -hmm. I think they're I think they're really really great. They're getting it right, yeah. um, and they're 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 having fun with it. And they they cast some unlikely Spider Mans too. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, I think Tom Holland is is great though. Yeah, like, he's I, got I some just, great comic timing. Yeah, like and he's so lovable. Like he's still so lovable. Yeah, like, I think Andrew Garfield's great, and Toby Maguire was good. But but mm -hmm. you're right, Tom Holland has got that that boy next door. Kid. Yeah. That, charm he's got charisma yeah you know, that he really brings i think uh, mm -hmm. and he's he's uh, he's a force he's been in some big stuff uncharted was big and yeah there's some other things that i've seen him in so good for him um so now that you're kind of you know you're not only just doing superheroes you're also doing some creature stuff can you talk about some mm -hmm. of that stuff can you just fill us in on what sort of stuff you've done and remind people of, of some of the shows yeah, so I guess, I don't know, one of my biggest shots, it wasn't that big of a show, it was Christmas Chronicles on Netflix. Uh, it was sort of their first foray into like a bigger sort of trying to become a classic Christmas movie. And I think it sort of almost made it there, I think. Yeah, I think. I um, but yeah, it was it was neat. It was my first time really doing like a full CG photo reel quadruped, which was a lesson in itself. Um, and at the time, we didn't really have we had a muscle system, but it was all controlled by Anim, whereas a lot of the ones we're using now are like um, machine learned. So we like teach teach it how to do, how to flex those muscles at the right time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was interesting to, to, to learn. It was just a, just a reindeer walking forward. And um, just to learn those, those on top of like all of the animation principles you have to know, mm -hmm. it's like, then you have to do a whole nother pass once it's final of, of these specific muscle groups and when they fire and that kind of thing. And then and then the fur gets added and you hope that it's still seen a little bit, but yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, there's nothing nothing worse than, or I remember, and uh, I was a television animator, so it's more meat and potatoes than it is. It's volume, really. Right. We're doing 30 seconds a week approved kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, were light, we were lighting and comping our own shots, too, which is, you know, That's we didn't get any extra. For, I couldn't imagine. <laughs> but I remember a director changing a camera on me once. I did a crash, a crashing spaceship, when, and it was great because the engines were tearing off, and they were tumbling, and the turbines came out, and mm -hmm. they were flying around. And, you know, you can animate all that stuff to go by the camera in a really cool way and stuff. And then he went, I think we're going to move the camera the other side of the shot. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, but they're, <laughs> all the, you can't see anything. Like, it's no. a disaster. Oh, yeah. well, it, you know, it's not a big, it's not a big story point. So it's fine. <laughs> Let's think, what about, what about all my art? <laughs> yeah. How do I feel? <laughs> but yeah, we, we get those all the time too. And it's, it's almost at this, at, like, it's almost a shot redo at that point, but yeah. luckily our timelines are long enough. It tends to be in the effects where we can pivot a little bit and try yeah. to make it, That's true. make it the same. Yeah. And that must be comforting though, when you know, you have the time. Uh, yeah. and, do, and do they say do the, do the directors uh, or the anim soups ever say to you hey this shot like take your time like this is a big shot sometimes um but also like we a lot of the time we don't know what the script is so we there could be a shot where some superheroes standing in a hero pose and it could be just they've beaten somebody or it could be like the first time you see them and we don't get a script so we don't necessarily know really what yeah well I, some some people do but they keep it pretty tight knit so, oh, so um, you don't know the context of what you're doing really yeah a lot of the time and if especially if you have a shot like right at the beginning of of one of the sequences at the studio you're working at mm -hmm. um you're just like where is this picking up from like what kind of vibe am i coming from right. into this shot so that that can that can be challenging sometimes but for sure like there was on on batman v superman um we had uh, and I mean, how old is that movie? Like 10 years old, but like spoiler alert, Superman dies at the end of the movie. Um, but I had one of the shots where Doomsday is holding him and he falls down um, and they're both dead at that point. But um, we actually had to, we knew that was a big point, obviously. Um, so they took, there was a group of about four of us that were working on that, that little bit. And they actually named it, it was a completely different show um it had a code it wasn't called bvs it was called something else and we had to go into the separate room and the other people on the show weren't even allowed to know what we were working on in there so that was that that one was definitely one there where they were like you have tons of time this is our money shot make it make it look cool yeah well, it must be and it must be great seeing that stuff on the big screen too yeah right? yeah for sure yeah, and everyone's crying because the room is yeah. yeah. And I'm not even looking at the screen. I'm looking at the people. <laughs> You're like, don't worry, he comes back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't say that. Yeah. Um, this is a small point. Capes, right? They're, they add those, right? Like the capes, they just don't, they don't mess around with capes in these shows. They just CG all the way. We can get it, yeah. we can make it look cool and the wind kind of. It floats beautifully as he's standing there, you yeah. know, with Lois Lane. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them are really heavy from what I've heard. Um, I know Doctor Strange's cape is sort of hell to wear and act in. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot of the time they'll just put, they do what's like sort of a collar. Mm -hmm. um, so so um, Doctor Strange's cape has this like big collar. Um, so he'll wear that. And then at least then we have something that we can tie to. Um, put the CG cape in, but yeah, it, it can be, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting because you've done all this nice anime and then they're like, Hey, let's put a nice big cape over top of the whole thing. Well, yeah. And if your character is like whipping his arms around, what's the cape doing? Right. I yeah. Mean, do they think exactly. about that or they, you know, you can't shot model an arm going through a cape, you know? It's right. Yeah. So most of the time, like on, on WandaVision, um, I had a couple of shots where, both visions were fighting in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, and we sort of, we do like, I don't know, if, if, if you're imagining the characters are polished final animation, the capes are probably in like an early blocking stage. That's what like a final cape would be on that show. Mm -hmm. um, so basically we just make it, we make nothing crash. We make it sort of swoop properly, but it's definitely not like, if you watch it, it doesn't look good at all. But it's just, it's just to give CFX sort of a jumping off point. Yeah. um yeah. so that they're not dealing with this like piece of paper sticking out of the back of the guy <laughs> as he's flying around right yeah. um did, 
I, I, I didn't look you, look up your IMDb just before this. I, I read it a little while ago. Um, mm. Have you done any um, like any any creatures that aren't like obviously reindeer don't exist. Well, they do exist actually. They just don't fly. But yeah. Um, but what about um, like any dinosaurs, lizards, dragons, anything like that? Mm. Anything, anything supernatural? Anything that's just otherworldly? That's... Yeah, it's been a lot of marvel which yeah. is that's yeah. nice well, um you know, there are some otherworldly characters there yeah 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 um i'd have to think about it no, nothing just, comes yeah. to mind off the top the, of the my reason head. i'm saying that is because you know when when we're dealing with humans we can motion capture stuff right right a lot of it ex yeah. except for the weird stuff you know you mm -hmm. i mean we did a we did a show once where they were wakeboarding you know, you, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't mocap wakeboard. You can try, yeah, they yeah. tried, they got skateboards, it, it, it didn't work. We threw it all out and we just hand keyed everything, right? Yeah. And, and it looked fine. So, uh, I mean, what's the balance for you guys? I mean, do you do you do, you do both? Do you, do you get some mocap and go, okay, this kind of looks like crap. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna use that part, but this stuff mm -hmm. looks okay. Uh, what do you do? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it, it often like there is bad good map mocap and good mocap and and sometimes we get stuff delivered and we're like this is pretty tight and pretty good like especially to be honest if it's like a person standing there it's that saves us days and days and days of work if yeah. if, if it's just a mocap keep alive that's <laughs> that's like a chocolate cake to me like i love it um it's when it's when there's the bigger movements and that kind of thing where well, normally what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to just bring in the mocap and send through just a vanilla version. Um, and then it gets torn apart. And I would say the majority of the time there's, at least uh, from my experience, there's like maybe like 20% of or, yeah, of, of the actual keys left from the mocap. Right. If, if it's a bigger, a bigger action scene, it's just depending on where the camera is and that kind of thing. When you get into polish, there's there's a lot of, stuff redone but what it helps is it gives you a huge jumping off point because you already have something that directors looked at mm -hmm. that he likes he or she likes so yeah great yeah um and on on that note so are there times when like avengers is a good example <clears throat> or any of the marvel stuff uh spider-man for instance uh where they have the live action stuff and then they look at it and they go yeah Let's just get Jake to do it in CG. It'll look, it'll look, you know what I mean? Like it's an, it's it's yeah. good. The actor did a good job, but yeah, it's just not quite. It's it's like every shot. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> like, <laughs> the, the, and 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 my animator brain right away goes, wow, what a waste of money. Yeah. Why are they still doing this? They, they should stunts. know by now. Does his own stunts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also it's a huge uh for like look dev and lighting. That's that's gold to them because they have something on set that they can match to. So yeah, right. when it when it comes to us, like it is a little interesting for them to be like, oh, okay, we filmed this and we want you to copy it, but we're gonna do it full CG. And I'm like, well, but oh, why? Why are we? Why are we? Why are we copying? Yeah. We can make it better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. But I mean, the creative control it gives them at the end of the day is is probably what they're after. So yeah. Well. Yeah, I think it's a nice, I think it's a nice marriage of all the different things that come together, you know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, you guys are doing these days are doing swapping characters mid shot, you know, yeah. like it's crazy what's going on. Uh, uh, even the latest Spider Man film where they were literally they replaced the body because they didn't like the suit. Yeah, and Tom Holland's heads, the, the, the recorded head, but the body's been replaced. Yeah. And that that happens a lot nowadays, especially with like skin tight um, superheroes when they're because I think on Spider Man Homecoming we had we did it we did we redid his suit with his body underneath as a collider for the cloth sim on the suit and it was tough mm -hmm. so a lot of the time now um, any of those skin tight clothed superheroes are often. CG from the neck down. Well, most of them are skin tight because they spend all the time in the gym. They got to get the yeah. <laughs> all that yeah. time in the Thor's gym. Thor's abs are real. I, I can say that. Yeah, I've seen some <laughs> of the workout videos that that guy does, and he's and he's yeah. got a great sense of humor too. I, I love him yeah. as an actor. He's, he's mm -hmm. very fun. Uh, a lot of those guys have got great senses of humor. So yeah, I don't know what that's about? Maybe it's all that time standing around on set, nothing to do. <laughs> 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 um. 
Let's see. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about just animation as an uh, art form. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you've obviously seen Arcane, I, I would imagine. Uh, uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I thought it was a great style. It was all done by a little company in, in Paris, and then I thought they did a great job. Um, I hope that they continue that that look. Uh, it's you know very exaggerated, very wiry characters, uh, mm -hmm. you know, really over the top movement, um, but great camera work uh, and and battle sequences that are staged in a really interesting way, mm -hmm. one which I, I liked. I uh, love Devon Ro Robots. I've got some great yeah. stuff going on there. Obviously, there's some really crazy stuff going on there. Always pushing the envelope. I know that you like to uh, experiment a little bit. Um, have you have you thought about some of this stuff on your own? Like, have you thought about doing some some of your own work? Uh, you know, developing a project. Yeah, I have I have a couple ideas for for like little short films and stuff like that. But it's almost it's almost as much so that I can because I do like want to move up into like a more supervisory role. Mm -hmm. I actually I did soup on um, Doctor Strange, the one that just came out. That was sort of my first foray into that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's almost as much like me wanting to learn the other departments. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's it's sort of beneficial on on in two ways, where I can have sort of a creative outlet and also learn at the same time. But uh, well, and you come from yeah. where your dad was a business owner, your mom was a business owner, yeah. so you see the benefits of that. Obviously, yeah. you know, being yeah. you live and die by this by your own sword rather than somebody else's. Yeah, and so I think what you're doing is very wise. By the way. Uh, like as an example for me, being able to start a school, I had owned businesses before, I had taught before, and I worked in the CG industry. So I had the three right. pieces I need. And being in the industry, and I was a supervisor for a number of years, I got to see all the departments working mm -hmm. and see how they work well together. So, you know, it gives you the the information you need. So when you're hiring people, you know what you're looking for. Yeah, uh, and you know who's got the chops and who doesn't, and those kind yeah. of things. And I think some of the great hires we made uh, over the years were because we've been there and and seen what great looks like. Um, for sure. And even for yourself, I mean, you're a very talented animator. I've seen your work, um, but at the same time, you know, if you were to say, let's just say, quote unquote, you or let's be hypothetical, you start a little Vex house or something, or an animation studio of some description, um, you know. Do you have a little shopping list in your head of guys and girls that you know that you might say, "Oh, I'm gonna get her one day"? <laughs> For <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, definitely. And and it's it it also has to do with like, I think a big big part of it is knowing what you know, but also what you don't know. Yeah. So I mean, like like if I if I was to do that, um, I wouldn't be so concerned about hiring someone that's amazing at Anim. What I'd be concerned about is hiring someone that knows like lighting, because mm -hmm. that's to me that's that's the wild west. And I'm still, I'm, I'm getting there and like, we'll sit in dailies and I'll pick out things that I feel like really quickly I would change and then hope that it gets mentioned as well. So I know I'm on the right track. Um, but that, that's sort of, I've thought about it now and then. And that's, that's sort of, I think the route I would go down is, is trying to get really good people that know the stuff that I don't necessarily. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a great philosophy. Find people that are better than you at the things you're not great at. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Or the things you don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's another part of it. You know, that's certainly, I mean, I have to say for me, I, I tried to design my job You know, I tried mm -hmm. to say, okay, what, what do I want to do and what don't I want to do? And, exactly. and anything I don't want to do, I, I'll have somebody else that's better at it than I would be and mm -hmm. has enthusiasm for it. Cause some people like for me, I'm not, I don't love the, you know, the bookkeeping, the counting stuff, but there mm -hmm. are people that are very passionate about numbers and they love that stuff. And that's amazing because that's their thing, you know, and they, and they, they, they feeds their soul. Whereas right. for, or, you know, the working with people and some of that stuff. So um, sure. what about, um, <clears throat> you know, was there anybody on the way up <clears throat> animators that you looked up to people that you said that girl, that guy, like those are my heroes in the animation industry. Or, or I mean, it, be, yeah. There's there, been a lot. <laughs> was, it, was, it people, was it people you worked with or people you just looked at from afar? Like, uh, usually people I worked with because um, I felt like like the I didn't necessarily have a, an animation hero that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You can name names. Yeah. <laughs> 
So like uh, when I was pretty early on, I was working on the Ninja Turtles TV show. Yeah. And all, all throughout uh, until that time, most of my, most of the people above me were sort of like, like very straight laced yeah. and very like, do this, do this, get this done by this time. And uh, my, my lead who eventually became a director on that show and now he's directing other stuff. Uh, his name's Carlisle Wilson. Um, he was just like a casual dude and he got everyone to get their stuff done on time the same way everybody else would, but just with like a positive attitude. And that I was like, I, I want to be like that guy, like that, that made me happy. And he never got flustered. And I mean, maybe he did, but he hit it so well from us that I, I felt like he was a good, like first sort of role model for me to learn like how to sort of handle a group of people. So I'd say and, he was definitely one of them. You can learn a lot from people like that. And, and by the same token, you can learn what not to be like. Because there's exactly. some, come across people that tend to get a little more heated up. And, yeah. and it sort of makes you go, God, that's not that's not yeah. a great way to, to deal. <laughs> yeah, I had a guy, I don't know if you ever have come across him uh, in years. He's a director. His name is George Similski. And uh, George no, was, I don't recognize him. He's worked at TA. He's worked at uh, Bardell. He's worked at uh, ILM. Uh, and, and a bunch of other places. Uh, and he was always a guy, he was a bit of a joker, but he was a very talented guy as an animator and then also very uh, talented as a director. And I can say this now because mainframes, <laughs> I don't work there anymore, but <laughs> he, used do, he used to do these these things where he would go, okay, let's, let's, let's cut some corners on this show and let's try and get it done a week early. And we had an eight week schedule and we'd try and do it in seven. Because if you can get it done in seven, you can just pretend to come to work and we won't tell the company. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's great. But we did, you know, and he, he would do things like he'd give you a shot and then you'd look at him and go, do the legs need to be in the shot, George? Really? Do they? <laughs> no, let's, let's, let, let's tighten it up. Right? <laughs> so now I just cut half the work out of the shot, right? Great. So it would just be cutting those kind of corners. We'd go, put, yeah. punch in here and we'll take two characters out of the shot because we need yeah. it by two o'clock. <laughs> All right, George. You know, and then we did. We finished the show early, and then he would just like collect everybody's like ID cards and just like just, just like, tap them in. Like everybody in the <laughs> what a like, hero! <laughs> yeah, because if they found out, of course, what do they do? They would shorten up our schedule. Oh, you're doing yeah. the next show seven weeks then. So we yeah. can't let them find out, right? Yeah, so it was pretty fun. Uh, working with George, he was always a laugh a minute, and 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 a great his shows were always great. I remember we won an award. We went to Gotham. We had a thousand dollars for nine of us to spend on lunch. Thousand dollars <laughs> on lunch. We tried. <laughs> we really. Tried. We gave the guy a four hundred dollar tip. <laughs> but it was, great. it was fun. Yeah, and, and a lot of companies wouldn't have let us have that money, but George just said, "No, no, give it to the crew." You know, right. give, let them yeah. go. So that was great. I think he's, he's still he's still out out there. He's still in town here, still directing. So. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, what about you? You're 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 super. Are you're mentoring now, uh, which yes. is awesome. So it's kind of gone full circle, and yeah. <laughs> uh, I've seen the portfolios that you've been producing, and they're they're great. And everybody's getting hired, which is which is great. And in fact, I have a guy right now who has his eye laser focused on you. Great. So uh, yeah, he's. I showed him some of your work, and he's like, "That's," because as soon as he heard Marvel and. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And Spider-Man. He's feeling. <laughs> that's that's going to be my guy. So, yeah, you're a big selling point, by the way. Right. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I got this guy. You know, he's like a superhero guy. You know, <laughs> he is a superhero. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so now you're you're mentoring. Tell us about that. I mean, tell us what that what that's like. So you're 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 going to work and you're you're getting notes and then you're going here <laughs> notes yeah yeah it's it's it was it's it's definitely a learning curve i think for sure and i i think it's definitely helped me in my job giving notes at work as well mm -hmm. because the notes i'm giving at work those people it, it's almost easier because the, they're they're animators they're expected to listen to the note do the note submit it and and when you go go into the school, like by third semester, they're usually rocking it. But there's obviously some little bits here and there that they haven't learned yet. Yeah. Um, so that that was a, a good learning curve for me. And again, I think it I was I was able to also learn 
from that for myself. Like I'm, I'm helping them and I'm giving them notes and stuff, but I was able to learn sort of note giving techniques and that kind of thing that, that, that really, I feel like helped me, um, helped me. I, I love well. something you said once, uh, and I forget where I read it, but you said, if someone likes something you did in a shot, don't lose it in the yeah. next notes, like make yeah. sure it's still there and you don't destroy the good thing in order mm -hmm. to take care of something that's not right. Yeah. I thought that was a, a really insightful point. But yeah, it's like, I, I don't know, it's like a, like a, like you're building Legos and you like, you're building the castle and you like the middle of the tower. So you rebuild the bottom of the top, but you keep that little middle chunk. Yeah. Yeah. Working there, so. Well, what about this? I mean, I know that there's been people I work for and I've, I, I can kind of, I, I learned to figure out what their thing is, you know, what mm -hmm. they love. And if you can figure a person out, you can just go, oh yeah, I'm just going to give them lots of that, you know, or her. Definitely. That. And then you kind of get, <laughs> get them kind of figured out and, and they're just like, man, you are, they, they look at you, and go, you're on fire. Like you're just killing yeah. it. You're like, yeah, yeah figure you out. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's easier to do that with like your anim soup. And then when it goes to say Marvel, they're like, why do you keep giving us this? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the true, that's the true thing you got to figure out is the client side, what, what their thing is, what they're, what they're really looking for. So. But sometimes the clients, I think they, you know, they don't always know what they want to do. I mean, some of them are really yeah. talented and insightful people, but some of them are just suits, yeah. you know, and they're just putting their mark on stuff. Mm -hmm. And often it's, a bad note you know they just go I, I think you should do this and this and you're just like what are you crazy that's yeah your, in your mind you know or, or, and you know there were times because we were in tv it, it was a lot easier to, to just not do it you know mm -hmm. just, just lie <laughs> pretend yeah, I did it. <laughs> oh yeah we're gonna get rolled over that <laughs> yeah leave and it's, it's it's tough because there's a lot of there's a lot of client side vfx soups that i feel like have come up through obviously they come up through other departments so like they know they can see animation they know that it's not what they want mm -hmm. but the the terminology is a is sometimes really hard to mm -hmm. to sort of translate into something that you can then change that they're happy about that's it's it's really hard sometimes to find that when they're like make make it 10% better <laughs> like yeah yeah I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> but really, they wanted like more anticipation before the jump. Like that's that's what they want, yeah, to see. But they don't know how to vocalize it. So, yeah, I, I always think it's funny when when you 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 do get those notes and you just kind of look at each other and go, I just don't know how to make this. Yeah. What you think, whatever it is, you know, like uh, can you make them a little bit more unfunny? Yeah, <laughs> you wrote the thing. Like, <laughs> He's not even trying to be funny. How can he be unfunny? Yeah, want to make a little frown on his face. Or something. <laughs> I don't know. We did a lot of laughing when we were doing these shows. Um, let's see what else have I got on this little list of mine. I, I Hannah wrote me these really great questions, and then I just destroy them. <laughs> I just <laughs> flash and burn through them. So, uh, um, yeah, this is another. This is a weird one. Um, so there's like you're an, you're an effects animator right because you work for effects mm -hmm. companies you know you, you've worked for yeah. i don't know 10 blockbuster big companies and some game stuff with ea and uh, was you we had another game studio i can't remember was it just ea uh i did a bit of stuff for gold tooth and they oh, mostly yeah, like game tooth. cinematics yeah and they do so, cinematics I, by the yeah. way i know Corey very well the owner oh yeah uh, he was in my he was in my my class like <laughs> nice <laughs> in school <laughs> and he was like he was very, and you want to know a guy who's obsessed by Star Wars. It, oh yeah, it's it's uh, uh, Cody, I should say. Yeah, and he was um, him. He had a. There's another guy, uh, Corey. So there's Corey and Cody. Corey Churko is now a guitar player for Shania Twain, and he was obsessed no with Star Wars too. He had all the little <laughs> dolls, right? In fact, his birthday was just a few weeks ago, and last year he turned fifty. I sent him the Boba Fett doll and a model A wing. To build, cool. just mailed it to California. To cool. like, I know his wife, uh, Jody, so I got her to pull the strings for me, and we sent it to him. So, but yeah, he, even at Mainframe when he was an animator there, he had all his Star Wars dolls all lined up. <laughs> we all thought he was crazy, but uh, but Cody was he was and Cody was a was a was a was a very talented guy, you know, and uh, he did a thing on his demo reel. Well, he had a, a piece uh, called uh, um, Tai Chi Grinch. 
So he got the he did the Grinch. He modeled the Grinch, and he had him in the snow doing Tai Chi. And this is back in the day when everything was on VHS, right? Right. So it was really hard to go viral back in those days, <laughs> but, it, but it did. It, it, tai Chi Grinch did go viral. And really? People would, like come up to him at Rainmaker and go, Tai Chi Grinch, right? <laughs> Just like, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's me, you know, it's funny. But I, what I was getting at is working for these effects companies, there's also animation in pure effects, like yeah. explosions and destruction and, you know, how hard does that car hit the ground? And yeah. you know what I mean? Do, do you do any of that stuff too? Like, do you ever do all, any of that? Like all the, all the time, every yeah. shot. Like um, from from if if Iron Man has fire coming out of his like hands for to fly, um, it's it's so much easier for us to get the timing right and then pass that to them than it is for them to like iterate over and over and over and rerun these big effect simulations. Um, so yeah, we always, we, we, timing is pretty much always done in Maya or in, in, in animation. Uh, and then we, we we'll normally just send them like an Olympic cache or something like that. And then they, they bring it into Houdini and, and time their effects to match to that perfectly. But that must be super fun. Some of that stuff. Yeah. 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 It's cool. It's, it's, it's another way of like sort of dipping your toe into another another department. Even though we're not in Houdini, we're not. We don't have fake fire everywhere. But do you um, ever get to like, oh, I get to destroy the Washington Monument? Or, or yeah, something. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, that's that's that part of it's cool too because you can you can sort of break realism a little bit and 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 come up with a creative way to do it rather than what would actually quote unquote happen well it's got to be <laughs> cinematic right yeah yeah let's, exactly. let's face it if this washington monument fell over it wouldn't be very interesting no no it's in a big field <laughs> a bunch of, bunch of bricks unbrick unbricking themselves you yeah know? exactly got to make it look you know, it's got to come down in stages and it's got to yeah. you know a lot of people running for their lives and all that yeah. stuff so i think that uh, that's that to me that would be fun to do i think some of those big carnage shots yeah and yeah, I, yeah, the sure. films you've been working on are full of those shots. Like they're full yeah. of footage. Like Doctor Strange was out of control <laughs> yeah. stuff in that show. Yeah, but, on the on the uh, the uh, the universe that's all like tearing itself apart. Um, like I got to I got to animate the Empire State Building and the Golden Gate Bridge, and like that would never or not the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, the Brooklyn Bridge. Right. Um, but like, if you think about it as an animator, you think like, why would I ever need to animate those things? But it was cool to like have a shot where I'm animating the building come right over top of them. Like that was, it wasn't hard. You're just, it's going straight forward, but it was, it was a neat thing to kind of do. Yeah, super fun. So a lot of people don't think about that stuff. They think, oh, they just get in Houdini and they put a couple of forces on it and they just push it over. It, yeah. It, way more to it than that. Yeah. And it's all about the camera too, right? It's all about where the camera is and how we're going to make this look cool. And I'm sure the director's are like, yeah, let's just have a, a wheel come winging past the camera, you know, like yeah. right here and like all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, it's it's a bit dizzying, actually. Doctor Strange was like, you know, you're I'm emotionally <laughs> exhausted from watching the, all yeah. that was going on in that show. Um, what about what about when you're, do you ever get asked to look at portfolios like at, at work, like where they're hiring? Uh, yeah, yeah, we did a lot for on Doctor Strange. Um, I'm not, I'm not souping on my current show, so I'm not as much into that. Um, but I, I, I would normally cover if my Anim soup is not available, um, which she is obviously busy all of the time. Um, so yeah, yeah, it, it was that was another sort of learning curve is is that inter the whole interview process was that was a fun like thing. To learn. I actually got tasked once with looking at demo reels, and I, I must say, back in those days, it was horrible experience because <laughs> there, <laughs> there just wasn't much talent around and the reels were pretty bad but so what is there anything that surprises you about looking at work uh, that are coming out of some of the schools or even coming from people that have have experience yeah i mean like to me if i see especially if it's a student if i see like a little bit of the extra mile i love that stuff like mm -hmm. my most recent student jose Oh, like his reels on, on he put water sim in it and he like like know, it's got dinosaurs in water like a, yeah like alligators like, fighting dinosaurs it's amazing yeah. so yeah. like unfortunately his we're having a tough like i've been trying to get him into dd for what forever yeah um but it, we're having a bit of visa issues but 
like that that's the type of thing where i mean if, if i even wasn't his his mentor i looked, I, looked um, I, would, I would have been like let's get this guy for sure like he I wants to be here shots today and he was one he was one of the guys i was talking about about of the great portfolio because his portfolio is unbelievable yeah like yeah. he's doing a, a night fighting shot today and it looks amazing cool and he's like one of the nicest guys i've ever met uh, as well yeah, he's, like he's he's, he's got the whole package yeah um uh, what was the other thing i was going to say oh uh i'm not sure are you on she hulk is a dd i think yes yes i did a bit of um like dev for some of the muscle systems and some of the facial um but then i i got moved over onto doctor strange oh yeah right yeah so is there is there any anything that's been announced that we we that i might have missed that's coming through dd anything any anything you're like salivating over or uh like upcoming stuff yeah yeah uh, I, I unfortunately don't think I can <laughs> divulge, <laughs> well, just but, give, um, so give us a, give us a, give us a hint, give us a, like, oh, it's, uh, this kind of a, you know, it's a space yeah. drama or it's a, yeah, know. well, Dee Dee's trying to get, uh, right now we have a lot of like superhero -y quadruped or, or biped, like superhero stuff. So they're definitely trying to get in more um like creature stuff and 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 more i think like without like marvel's been amazing to us so like without interrupting that whole aspect of it sort of getting those other like more not an independent movie but just like a standalone movie that isn't gonna have a sequel that's just a good movie that has the effects in it i think that's sort of sort of something that they're we're, we're trying to get in trying to get in more for sure are you too young to remember a show on TV called Johnny Quest? Maybe you are. It rings a bell for sure. Oh, anyway, it's a it's a it's a cartoon that I and he was he was great because his dad was a scientist and he had all these really cool toys and he. Did he have like big blonde hair? Yeah, he had blonde hair and he, yeah. had, a, he had an Indian friend named Haji and a little dog named Bandit, <laughs> and uh, and actually. The other guy, the buddy of his old man, was a guy named Ray Spannon, I think, and he ends up showing up in uh, Archer. Uh, oh no, oh, okay. uh, the, no, the um, what were the, the brothers, the, the the something brothers? What were they called? They were the, a couple of idiots, but it was a really funny show. The Venture Brothers, the Venture Brothers. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So he kept showing up in that show, and it was they brought the character back in that show, and I said, Venture Brothers, just bring back Johnny Quest. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah great show back in the day and, and they've been you know hollywood's been knocking it around forever trying to get a good script and get the thing mm -hmm. off the ground but it would be a great uh, franchise i think because uh, it's got yeah. so many interesting things in it but anyway i digress yeah. um yeah so looking looking at jose i mean jose's guy's just a machine right yeah just point him at the computer and he does great things <laughs> um yeah and i don't know why somebody hasn't uh hasn't worked it out for him because he is going to be a stellar yeah. employee yeah. he's such a nice guy he's so hardworking, and he's so mm -hmm. talented so um but what about portfolios in general anything you want to say to anybody like if you want to get into this industry you want to follow in my footsteps you want to be you know a marvel animator on top tier you know the biggest projects in the world what, what are you going to do like what, what what somebody can what should somebody do what, what's the <laughs> what's the ask um how to stand out how to how to get, get yeah people. it's it's interesting because it's 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 like I'll, I, I'll go off on a bit of a tangent but it's it's a lot unfortunately it's a lot tied to like when places are hiring like right now it is like come one come all please yeah. <laughs> everywhere needs people okay. um so if you can if you can get in at that time that's that's huge but um no honestly like if you if you want to be an effects animator that's your thing that's what you want to do then do effect stuff like like to me if i see a reel that um only has really 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 good i don't know like like facial animation at the time if we have a really cool facial animation show that's something that could work out but um if we don't like you haven't shown then that you can do like really cool body mechanics and action stuff so i think i think show it like decide what you want to do the most and make sure that that's very clear on your reel is what what I would what I would personally say. Um, that being said, out of school for me, like I had zero preference. Like my my motivation was I want to be paid to do this as a living because this is cool. So so I just tried to just be like this is everything I can do. 
here's a little bit of all of it. Please hire me. <laughs> and, and didn't you go on to like, you did some Barbie stuff at the beginning? I did. My, my first job was layout on Barbie. So we were, we were importing mocap files and putting them in sets and then <laughs> passing them to, them to the animators. So. Lots of pixie dust. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't work on Barbie. I, I actually, the last job I did there, they said, we can keep you, but you're expensive. So we're going to have to put you on Barbie because it has more money. And I went, yeah, <laughs> so I think I'm going to go. Yeah. Like, it was, I mean, like I, I, it was, I definitely didn't have a ton of interest in the show, yeah. but uh, it's so much about the team. Like the team was really yeah. nice. Our, oh. our little layout group was sat in this little Rainmaker corner. slash mainframe is a nice place to work. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think the people there are kind and, and, and fun and, and uh, you know it's been around for a long time. There's a lot of legacy there, so it's mm -hmm. kind of cool. So we did yeah. some cool stuff there. Um, <laughs> okay, well, just we're getting down to the last couple of questions, Jake. Um, is there anything just you want to add? Uh, any comments about your job? Any insights? Anything you want to say to people that maybe they just don't know about the industry or or about you or or about the future of animation moving forward? I mean, let's face it, the tools have changed a little bit, but animation is still yeah, I mean, you look back on, I mean, on, I don't know if you're like this, but when I look back on some of that early Disney animation, it just makes me exhausted to watch because I know how hard what they were doing was. Like, yeah. 2D animation to me just scares me. You know? <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember like we had that, we had an assignment, I think in semester, was it semester one, I guess, where yeah. we had to do like the flower sack 2D anim. Yeah, and I was <laughs> when I was done. I was like, okay, I did it. I don't need to do that again. Yeah, imagine doing nine, uh, the the seven dwarves all fighting with each other. You know, yeah, like, like I like couldn't imagine movement. You know, they're all which direction's that one turning, and and his you know his floppy beard is going that direction. Yeah, you know, it's just too to much. keep track of it all. Like for oh. me, I can just hide. I can constrain a character to a character to another and hide him. And I know when I unhide him, he's still going to be following that character. And that doesn't, you well, can't do that. It was like the chicken run square dance. Remember yeah. That, that yeah. freaked me out because there was like 14, 20 chickens or something all going in different square directions. Dance. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. That must How do you keep track crazy. of it? Yeah. Right. And that was all yeah. stop motion, right? Yeah. And I, I know guys that worked on some of those Ardman shows and they said that, you know, they didn't have the ability to video it in the early days so they could Put things back you know right nowadays if they knock over a character they can still get it back into alignment the cameras are so good um you know like at leica or something like that mm -hmm. they said you know, they would be working on a sequence and somebody would knock over a coffee or something and it would hit a character and down it would go and they would just turn and look at that person and <laughs> take them out in the parking lot and just beat them <laughs> <laughs> because they had to go back and start again right yeah Not yeah hours of work gone you know it's just, yeah the yes. comparable to that now is like when our, because we're working from home. So if we lose our connection or if the farm goes down or something, that, that's that's our uh, our version of that for sure. But then you just go like, woo, we get a break. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that too. Unless you didn't save recently, then you're screwed. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, anything you, anything that's missing on portfolios that you're seeing? Anything that students might want to look at adding? Like, is it creature uh, stuff? Is it something a bit more effectsy or or anything anything you might want to honestly a big a big thing that i see happening that i need to get onto is learning a game engine oh. um that's it's like the the we have sort of a department that's kind of doing that right mm -hmm. now um but just the amount of stuff you can do in the viewport in a game engine compared to a viewport in maya yeah you can't even compare the two Right. Um, and it's, I see that if it doesn't blend soon, I see it sort of leaning a little bit more to the game engine side, especially because right now we can't, we, when we send shots to the client, we don't send play blasts anymore. We send, we send, it's called an anim render. Okay. Um, so we, we have this, our own like dumped down version, um, of how to like set up a full render and a full comp and render comp our scenes and those are what gets sent to the client so that they can see it with look dev and motion blur and that kind of thing. So wow. um, if we were working in a game engine, 
that would just be straight out of the box. We wouldn't need the farm time and that kind of stuff. So, right. cause they're pretty light renders. It's just, you can't do it on your personal machine. So right. um, any, anyone that we, that we look at that has hefty or even mediocre game engine experience, um, it's a huge plus right now, in my opinion, so. And they're animating right in the engine. Uh, not necessarily. I know that in Unreal you can. They're they're making moves to make it better. Um, I used it at Gold Tooth when we were working on a pilot uh, a while back, and it was rough. <laughs> it was like the first. I assume whatever the first version of Maya was like, where it's like I wish this did so many more things. But I, that was I don't know five years ago now, four years ago now. So I assume it's, I haven't touched it since, but I assume they've been, they've been making moves to make it better. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know what Unreal 5 is bringing uh, to animation, but um, I'm sure they're all over it because yeah. they, they're a very smart company. Uh, yeah. so in fact, one of my next podcasts is a guy named Justin Molman, and he's uh, kind of does a lot of education stuff for Epic and for Unreal. Cool. So uh, yeah, I should ask him, but he's coming into town actually for Seagraph. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you going you to head down to Seagraph? I might if I can snag a ticket from Didi. <laughs> yeah, if you can do it. I mean, we might be yeah. able to get one too as an alumni, cool. but um, I'm not sure how many we get. But we used to get like over 100 tickets or something. But I don't gotcha. don't quote me on that now. But but we have our regular double wide booth there and that. And gotcha. We'll be having some fun over there. So cool, yeah. cool. Um, yeah. Well, uh, last thing. Anybody give you some great advice in your career that really stuck with you? Like something that you went, yeah. Huh. Any, I've had some bad advice for sure. Let's hear that. <laughs> no, let's hear that. No, uh, I mean, no, I'm just kidding. But um, let me see. Um, you remember, did you did you ever meet a guy named Greg Barrage at Sony? No. Okay, Greg, he's uh, he does the education stuff there, and he's also a very skilled CG guy, and he does he knows Unreal and a few other things. And he had a very interesting comment when I asked him about this. He said that, I, and I forget who took him aside and said this to him, but at some point someone said, oh no, it was, it was something he read. And it said, your dream come true is on the other side of your biggest fear. Yeah, I like that. I think yeah. that's true for sure. Yeah, I think it's true, you know? Uh, I think we sometimes short circuit ourselves. Uh, uh, it's like, it's like uh, Gretzky said something like, um, you know, you miss on every every shot you don't take. Yeah. And I think that's true. Yeah. So you, you gotta take a chance once in a while. And exactly. you're I know you, you're a you're a very uh, athletic guy. I mean I mean our listeners don't know this, but Jeff, uh, Jake can really sing. <laughs> no. you're, like a, you're like a regular um Hugh Jackman. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. without the without the ability to dance <laughs> uh, you're not so bad i mean you're a pretty athletic <laughs> guy you're a great skier you're a good water skier uh you know you're a good mountain biker uh you, you, you've done lots of different things like that and you also can play a mean guitar uh, which is <laughs> which is cool but you can sing like i yeah. remember those 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 uh musicals in high school and you you were the man dude. i i think was there some <laughs> Was there something at a restaurant or something where you got up and sang or, or some of that? Someone probably forced me to. I hope I've probably blocked it out of my memory. <laughs> there was some event where you got up and you sang a song and and kind of crushed it. Uh, I forget what it was, <laughs> but uh, no, you got some hidden talents there, and you're definitely very musical, um, which is I think a really nice thing to have under your belt. Yeah, and uh, I mean I have my guitar right right next to my desk, so it's nice when I'm like waiting for a play blast or something to just learn something new well and, and my friend justin who i mentioned just a moment ago who works for epic he is a guitar minder for one of the metallica guitar players no way yeah like the guitar <laughs> awesome. yeah so yeah yeah guys. i don't know which guy it is but yeah uh, but that's it he said i said dude you how many jobs do you have he's also <laughs> an editor on heavy metal magazine yeah i know right like god you got every you got the best got four lives <laughs> right like, got good jobs too those are the fun jobs right yeah yeah. So, but yeah, so so is there any any well let's say this. How about a piece of advice from Mr. Jacob Sorensen for our listeners? Uh I guess I guess it would be sort of the, along the same lines, but like if you want something, go for it. Like I 
I knew I, I I still know I want to move up. Like I I I think I could be a VFX soup and and keep keep going after that. But it, you do have to pay your dues and you have to keep learning. I obviously don't think I know everything, but you can't learn unless you do the thing. In my opinion, you can be told how it works and how to do it as much as you want, but until you're actually doing it, you can't you can't grow. In my opinion, so like when when I got the 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 soup roll say on on Doctor Strange, I wanted it. Like I was I was pining for that. I I asked them and asked them and asked them and I got it. And then so I'm excited for about thirty seconds, and then it sets in. It's like oh shit, I got to do this now. I got to I have never done this before, and I have to do it. So it's like it, it can be scary, but I think that if if that's what you want you got to, and you believe in yourself, you got to go for it. Well, you know, I always say that if you're an animator, you're a performer, you yeah. know, you're, you're, you're like an actor. Yeah. You are putting a performance on the screen mm -hmm. and you're not a shy guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are, you are, you, you're, you know, if there's a karaoke machine, you're not going to say, <laughs> oh, oh no, not me. <laughs> you're gonna, yeah. you're well, that's like, I wanted to go into, I wanted to go into acting yeah. after high school. And I think I remember <laughs> the, how the conversation went with my dad and he was like hmm, maybe not though well, <laughs> so, dad, your dad had been very close to the film industry for many years yeah yeah so right. so i think that that is in in one way animation is filling a huge void in that way sure. where i'm not on the screen but i'm making the decisions that get put on the screen so that's that's pretty awesome Do you ever get out of your chair and video yourself all the time you all have to time. <laughs> yeah Marvel, Marvel somewhere locked away has lots of videos of me looking like a complete idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just try to lift up this Thor's hammer one more time. <laughs> yeah, and that, I mean, at this point, they probably own it. So they have... <laughs> they yeah, they do, do the outtakes. It's, it's going to be the Jacob Sorensen outtake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I ever win an Oscar, they'll be playing those videos on the screens while I walk up or yeah, something. <laughs> never win. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd pay to see that. Yeah, <laughs> me too, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think we should all do those things. You know, it's embarrassing things. So yeah. It humanizes us, so. Yeah. But, uh, all right, Jake. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for spending some time with us tonight. Um, yeah, no worries. Look forward to seeing you again. Happy birthday. Thank uh, you. And uh, I think you, I, am I wrong in, in saying that you have a, a, a bit of a milestone coming up in your personal life? Uh, I don't know. Oh, well, I got engaged there you go now we're talking <laughs> i think i think my fiance heard you and did a fake cough from the other room <laughs> when you asked that. <laughs> you got engaged so at some yeah. point in the future could be yeah 25 years from now but there will be you know a, a marriage which is cool yeah. and exciting yeah and uh i look forward to seeing her sometime in mock and bowl or something did she do that kind of summer theater stuff or she yeah did? she she did yeah 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 yeah, for great. Sure. Well, and we'll look for her on the big screen too one day. But uh, I just want to say thanks to Jacob, and I want to say to our listeners, thanks for tuning in to today's episode. And please uh, follow us on uh, Instagram and Apple. I think Apple. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to trying to do my job here, but <laughs> I'm pretty good at it. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so be well and stay smiling, and uh, good luck with your career and all those things. I, I'm sure there'll be great things. And uh, as I said, I have I have some people. Who would like to just squeeze you for great uh, animation <laughs> advice and, and notes and those things? Because if any, you know, if everybody turns out like Jose, man, we might my, my worries are over. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jake. Thanks, buddy. Awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, say hi to him when you see him next. We'll do. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah. Bye bye. Thanks for tuning in to Who's Flying This Thing. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay fresh on all things CG. For even more great content and buzzworthy updates, follow us at Think Tank Training. Thanks for flying. <laughs>